So the hoop was originally made from willow or wood, which is what I'm using today, uh, in the shape of a circle or a teardrop. Uh, and the hoop so, serves mainly as the frame of the dream catcher, but you can use other things as well. You can use things like hazel or dogwood, that's quite bendy, that can be made into a hoop like this. And the web was traditionally patterned after a spider's web, and its purpose is to trap the bad dreams and prevent them from entering to the dreamer's head. Um, the feathers, uh, one of the many beliefs uh, about the use of the feather is that it allows the good dreams to glide down into the dreamer's head, acting almost as a smooth ladder. And the beads, usually a single bead is used, but I've used uh, multiple beads on here because I happen to like them, um, represents the spider that spun the web. Um, several of them may represent the number of dreams captured during the night. Some people use gemstones or they replace the feathers in some parts uh, with gemstones as well. So this is a hoop that I fashioned from willow out of my garden and willow is quite bendy. It's better to use it around about springtime when the sap's rising. It's much more supple and I've got a first year growth here of green willow uh, which I've been seasoning for a few days. So what we're going to do first of all is add the thread uh, to the dream catcher to make the web and I'm going to do it first without the beads on uh, just so you can see clearly how to make the web itself and then I'll demonstrate how you add the beads as well. So what I'm going to do is just start and I'm just using ordinary uh, uh, double knit wool but you can use string um, or really strong cotton thread as well if you or motorized thread if you've got that and I'm wrapping it around about 10 times just so that I can be sure that I've got one continuous piece of thread but when you're using long bits of thread like this be aware that it can get tangled up quite easily um, so what I'm going to do and start by tying a knot at any point around the hoop and I'm just going to do it there with a little bit of a join so I can tuck that end out the way and then I've got this lovely my dad's made these so this is a, a bit of wood out of the garden that he just sharpened with a pencil sharpener and crafted a hole in the end to make a darning needle I've got tons of these we did used to sell them on the website but they're all sold out but I have got lots actually that I need to relist. So what I've done is it's, be it's very very long so you have to be very careful that you lay it out at the side of you so it doesn't get tangled and then what I'm going to do is start by what can only be described as stitching this on and if you've, if you've done embroidery in the past you may be aware of a stitch called blanket stitch and it's very similar to that. So what I'm going to do is get the thread and then hold, just lay it over the top of the hoop and then with my darning needle I'm going to go under and this space that's been created here I'm going to bring the darning needle up and through and then pull all of that thread all the way through and just move it along till there's about a four or five centimetre gap and pull it really really tight. So can you see there's a little bit of a loose bit there and then I'm going to do the same so bring it across can you see how I'm holding it here with my finger and thumb so I'm holding it really tight there don't pull it too tight that it will snap so pull it like that lay that over and then I'm going to go under and bring this needle up through that gap like so and then I let go you can at this stage just move that along a little bit but if you do make sure you're pulling it pulling up the excess there so you're keeping it nice and firm same again over under through i'm going to go a bit faster now pull it tight move it across same again over under through If you find as you're going round 
you notice that one back here is a little bit loose you can still tighten it up so you just literally just pull 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 like that and then you can pull up the slack there it's a lovely activity to do it's a little bit like the weaving um, the circular weaving we did a few weeks back it's very meditative when you get into the rhythm you start to lose yourself a little bit in what you make you're doing you're making <clears throat> now we're just about to get back to the beginning so i'm just stopping near to the end here and what we've got now rather than going over the hoop what we've got here is that first stitch that we created here this time instead of going over the hoop we're actually going to go into that space so through that space there and then back up to this new space we've made here so to the left hand side and then what you need to do is roughly ensure that you get that into the middle of each of those stitches so the next one here you want to attach it to the middle so what we do is exactly the same as we did before we pull that we go under there through there almost like a blanket stitch can you see i'm holding this taut as well so don't try not to let go otherwise it will become loose pull it tight and then move it across to the middle and you can see there's another gap being made here which we'll come into when we come to the subsequent rounds so same again here pull it through so that goes through there don't worry if you haven't got a darning needle at home because you can do this just with your fingers a little bit more fiddly but it can be done so don't worry if you haven't got one So we just keep going round and round like that. As we go round and round, on each subsequent round, these little gaps here get smaller and smaller. I think they call it something like the Fibonacci code. But don't ask me too much about maths because it's not my area of expertise. So I've got a knot in it. That's what you don't want. So you can see I'm pulling it really tight. And the reason I'm pulling it tight is to get it to almost come away from the edge. So it gives it that nice, almost like spidery, lacy effect that a web has. Just untangling a little bit. There we go. I'm not going to do much more because I think you've probably by this point got the idea. But what I'd like to do is just show you what to do when you get to the third round and then i'm going to show you how to tie off and we're back round to the beginning again Oops. so we're back here so now we go into these gaps here gets a little bit easier now because you're not quite butt up against the edge of the willow so that little triangle there we go in there through and pull same here and that little triangle through there and pull and what you'll notice is these subsequent triangles are getting smaller as we go around it's a little bit smaller than that one fractionally smaller okay right so what i'm going to do now because you want you'll want to know 
what we do to tie it off. So I'm going to put that on one side and go on to uh, here's one I made earlier. So what I've done here, it's upside down for me. Oh, just to note, if you're left-handed, you, you'll probably find that you go that way round. So can you see here, I've gone round and round and round and each subsequent round has got smaller and smaller. And now I feel that that hole's big enough there uh, for us to finish off. So what you would do now, I'm just gonna thread this darning, lovely darning needle. So I've done one stitch, I'll do it actually, I'll do it here. I've done one stitch into the next one. And then I'm gonna do another one into that very same hole. So I'm going through there again. And by doing that, that makes a half hitch knot. And then again. So it's almost like you do a blanket stitch into that same hole three times. And pull that really, really tight. And then you can slip that. There you go. So that's your completed dream catcher. So you start off in exactly the same way uh, I showed you with the basic one. And um, but what you need to do is thread your beads on first. So I've got here, it's just a, a little little bit of wire. I think the sort of wire that you would use if you've got a, like a fuse to fix or some electrical wiring type thing, anything, thin wire. But you could just as easily use something like um, just a bit of thread as well. And what I've got here is some beads um, that I found. I get donated all sorts of stuff, but if you go into a charity shop, you can often sit, find old necklaces and just buy a load of them for a couple of quid and cut them all up. And I do that often and have a, a good stash of beads. So th th this has got quite a, a quite a wide hole and all you need to do then is just thread as many beads as you think you'd need in your dream catcher onto the yarn beforehand. And I've already got some on here already. And then what I'm going to do is just thread my darning needle exactly like we did before and then this time I'll start off in exactly the same way so going over and under and then this time we've got those beads to pull through with us the same again over under through And then when you want to add a bead, what you do is you just draw it along like that and you do the same over, under and through. It's a little bit more tricky. With the beads, you find that when it gets smaller and smaller as you get to the middle, um, it can. That's when it gets really fiddly. So I recommend that you have a go at doing your dream catcher just with a piece of string and no beads. And then when you feel confident that you've cracked it, that's when you move on to threading the beads beforehand. Of course, you know there's nothing to stop you from um, stitching the beads on. They don't tend to look as good. Uh, because they'll flop around a little bit if you've got extra uh, little bits of thread on it. So I'm just going to move that one across. Fancy one there. Move that over there. Over. Through. And draw those beads through. Back, back to the beginning 
Now this is where it gets tricky. So what I do is I turn it around. So I'm using gravity here. Pull them through, turn it back. And back through this hole here. And up. Now I'm going to incorporate a bead. So I'll move that across. Now what I'm doing is going down through there. If I pull that through, it can be a little bit tricky. So I sometimes turn it round and then bring that back through. Like that. What we're going to do next is start adding the strips or what they called the ladders, didn't they? The ladders where the dreams flow through. Okay, so I've got here, I've been through my stash and I've got all sorts of different textures and colours. So I've got ribbon, I've got some, here I've got a, a little bit of, it's old sheeting off my bed, it got a hole in the middle but I washed it uh, and I've kept it because it's really good quality cotton. And what I've done is I've just snipped it, it's a woven fabric and woven fabric works really, really well for snipping and cutting and it has it's got this rough edge that I really like. This here is a uh, silk from a sari. The only downside to that is it sheds after you've uh, ripped it. You can still rip it in the same way so often you need to just go down and pull those threads off. And it's lovely and floaty sari is. There we go. And then yeah, I've got a variety of laces here. But if you have a look through your cupboards at home, you might find bits of lace trim or some old pillowcases that might want reutilizing. Um, and so that's my collection there. I'm going to start off by I think I'll start with a little bit of silk sari, and then I'm going to fold that over. And make a little slit like so and then thread that around the hoop and the end of that strip I'm going to push through that slot slit there and pull do that again with another piece like that and it over This one's handy because it's got holes in already, but I'll just make that a little bit wider. Make a little slit there. With the ribbon, if I put a slit in that, it will start fraying. So what I'll do with the ribbon is fold it in half, thread it through and then get the two ends. You see that it's made a loop there. I'm just going to get the two ends of the ribbon, thread it through like that and pull. Actually I should have done that the other way around. I've made a mistake there haven't I? It'd be neater actually if I go through the front of it like that. And that's better. Same again, I've got a nice thinner bit of uh, lace here. Through the back first is better, makes it neater. I've not done it with these, but these little bits of cotton, there's nothing to stop you from doing some embroidery along it. So maybe a few, a running stitch along there in a contrasting colour.
I think we get the idea. So you, I've, I've chosen these lighter colours because the um, feathers I'm going to use in a minute are quite strident and I didn't want the colours of these strips of fabric to kind of swamp the beauty of them. So I think that's quite enough on there for now. So last week we made some lovely painted feathers. You can see here is one of the feathers that we used and I've chosen, you can see why I've chosen that lighter colour there um, because it shows off the, the lovely sort of painting on that blue feather. So I'm just going to pop that on one side and show you how to thread the feather. So what I've got here, I've just got an ordinary needle and thread and feathers are made of keratin so it's a little bit like nail. Um, you can stitch through them. So I'm just going to push that needle. There we go. So that's gone right the way through the feather, the shaft of the feather. And then those beads that I've collected, I'm going to start threading. some lovely glass beads that somebody gave me. Sometimes you can get those beads to, to actually go down the shaft of the feather. I don't think it's going to do it with this one. It's quite a wide feather. But it's a little bit. There we go. So we've got some lovely beads on the feather as well. You can put all sorts on, you can put buttons, anything. You might even have something special at home that you want to incorporate uh, or thread onto your feather. And then once we've uh, done that to all of our feathers, we can then start attaching them to the dream catcher. This is quite thin, so I'm using really thin cotton here. This is up upholstery cotton, so it's quite... Uh, um, unbreakable it but you can use uh, use a good quality cotton just check the cotton though before uh, you use it just check and see if it snaps easily um, you can use thin string as well if you've got really thick beads oops there we go there's one And then by chance, oh, as if by magic, we've got lots of pre-threaded threaded ones here. There we go. So. The last thing that you might want to do is just shape the bottom of your dream catcher. I'm just going to move that up a little bit. They're all different lengths here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of cut it in a almost like an arrow sort of shape, giving it a haircut. That out. It looks a, does it look even? No, I'd be a terrible hairdresser, wouldn't I? There we go. So it's almost like pointy at the bottom. It's almost got like a pointy bottom. And that's it. It's actually dream catcher made. So before we go, I'm just going to show you other ways that you can make dream catchers. So this one is done on a bangle. So what I did was I got just an ordinary bangle like this 
and I wrapped some fabric around the outside and I actually used a, a, a some I think it was merchurized cotton and stitched the the first round so I actually stitched it to the to the uh, cotton that I'd wrapped around the outside and as you can see it's much more intricate uh, and then in the middle when I got to the middle I put a button on either side similar thing I did here and then I got a little bit of a pattern off some lace and added stitched that into the middle so again that's something that you would do uh, perhaps once you've got a little bit more competent with uh, figuring out how to make a dream catcher it's quite fiddly to do that and then this is just a piece of crochet um, that I've mounted using a, an embroidery hoop so together all three of them together made make this lovely sort of dream cattery uh, it's a window hanging for me but you could have it as a wall hanging at home so that's a, another way um, that you can make a dream catcher you could perhaps see that a little bit better against my red dress there that's that little hanging I've had it for quite a few years now and here is the one that we've just done for that demonstration so if I step back I think it's back to front actually you can see it's gone into a little point at the bottom 